Welcome everybody back to the pew. This is Kim and I'm Mike. Well, today uh, on our on our show, we're going to be discussing the 10 most encouraging verses out of the book of Hebrews. And you know, you could probably say that every verse in the book of Hebrews is important or encouraging, but we kind of went through many, many verses and came across what we thought were the 10 that would be the most encouraging, uh, both to us as well as to you. I'm excited. So Mike, I noticed that you and Pastor Brian have both been speaking out of the book of Hebrews. What is with that? How did that happen? Well, I hate to tell everybody, but Pastor Brian steals my messages. No, re reality is, uh, Kim, is that neither of us knew what we were speaking on week to week. Even he didn't even know the series. I didn't know his series. And it just kind of happened that way. Maybe God had something to do with it. I've noticed that that happens so often, and it's pretty cool. We know that um, God has a message for our people, us, his people, and um, it just kind of proves it. That's cool. Well, my next series is going to be on transubstantiation in you, so we'll see if Pastor Brian actually picks up on that. So, so Kim, should we get started? Yes, we should. All right. So we're going to start with number 10, the 10th most encouraging verse out of the book of Hebrews. Are you ready? It is Hebrews 13, 8. And Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Kim, that really speaks to me about the dependability of God. Absolutely. Gosh, I need that every day. Absolutely. So number nine on our list is Hebrews 12, 11. And that says, no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. That um, verse just really speaks to me because you're right. Discipline is not pleasant. And um, if we didn't know that God has a purpose and will bring something good out of it, it would be so discouraging and we just want to give up. I know. I was thinking, why would I be encouraged about discipline? It kind of sounds like God has a plan, right? A purpose. Well, um, and discipline isn't necessarily God spanking us, but sometimes <laughs> it's that personal trainer behind us that is pushing us to go forward and and making us do that extra 10 seconds on that plank when we just want to give up and feel it, we can't do it. But um, we have that pr trainer who was, who was um, pushing us to, to go further. I like that, I like that. So next time times get rough, I'll try to remember that verse. <laughs> In fact, I would encourage you with all these verses, all of them are, me are, are memory worthy. So I would highly encourage you to maybe put some of these to memory. Let's look at number eight. Our eighth most encouraging verse in the book of Hebrews speaks to those who feel a little bit tired and weary and well-doing. It is Hebrews 6.10. And Hebrews 6.10 says, God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. Kim, have you ever felt a little discouraged by serving and maybe you're not always getting everything that you want to get out of it? Yeah, sometimes it could be discouraging when you're working really hard and wondering if it's really making a difference um, or you're just tired. That's, that's right. This is just a reminder that God is fair and he is going to, uh, he does notice. I think Kim actually told mm -hmm. me he notices when we do. So what do you say, number seven, Kim? Sure, number seven is Hebrews 4, 9. And that reads, there remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. That is um, encouraging because um, we don't always have to do. <laughs> um, Sometimes God makes provision and wants us just to be. And that's something um, to hold on to that we don't always have to feel driven, that we have to do something to please mm. God, but he wants us just to rest because he loves us and accepts us and um, wants us just to be. And he actually even made that example, even in, in creation, that even God rest. Mm. And um, 
that that's something that we can do um, and not feel guilty about. I don't know about you, but for Kim and I, I mean, maybe you feel this way too, this shelter in place has kind of made us rest a little bit. Uh, in fact, I read something on Facebook that uh, I think you showed it to me that uh, maybe the year 2020 is the year God gives us 2020 vision to kind of refocus things. And, and you know, being isolated can be rough, but if you could take it as a time of rest and consider it that way, it might help it be a little bit more more bearable. Would I think you agree? So I do. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to number six. Number six speaks about God's empathy. Are you ready? It is Hebrews two eighteen. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Uh, I don't need any help when I'm tempted. That's a laugh. <laughs> I am so glad that Jesus uh, understands temptation. Yeah, me too. I tell you, he understands it, which means he has overcome it, which means that he can help us. I think it's awesome. And also, he just... Um... He's, he's like, the Bible says he's our brother. It's like he's mm. ex experienced the same things that we can. And um, so that just makes it um, more that, that God has come down to us. And he's just, he's like us, but not like us. <laughs> That's awesome. So the next one, um, number five on our top 10 list is Hebrews 10, 23. And that reads, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And that verse just lets us know that don't give up, because mm -mm. God is faithful, even when it's hard. That's right. God is faithful. That is awesome, Kim. Mm -hmm. Well, we're getting down close to the home stretch. We're now at number four. And number four is one of my favorite verses in the book of Hebrews, actually one of my favorite verses in the Bible, it is Hebrews 4.16. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. That is a power packed verse. And the word that speaks most to me is confidence. Mm -hmm. Kim, do you, do you feel that way when you go to God in prayer? Well, yeah, because I, I'm confident because Jesus has accepted me. He's like me. He's invited me in. And that gives me confidence. And I know that God hears me. That's right. I mean, there's so, when I go to maybe someone in authority, maybe a boss or so, I kind of go with trepidation because I'm not sure if they're going to receive me or they're going to accept what I have to say, if they're going to mm -hmm. be angry. But God always, he's there to give us mercy and grace. He's not there to punish us. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, th this is a great, the first seven have been amazing, but we're getting down to the home stretch now. We have the top three, but before we get to the top three verses in the book of Hebrews, we have this very important message. It's Carissa. Just wanted to let you know about some upcoming changes to Wednesday Night Bible Study. So beginning next week, June 3rd, our Wednesday Night Bible Study will begin at 6 p.m. And you can view it on YouTube, Facebook, our website and app. And afterwards at 7 p.m., we'll be having a Zoom discussion meeting um, led by Pastor Mike. So if you would like to be a part of that Zoom discussion meeting, you can text Zoom. 209-270-6543 and we'll be happy to text you those meeting details so you can join in. I hope you guys have a great week. See you later. Bye. Welcome back everybody. I don't know about you, but I've absolutely been, I've adored, loved those top seven verses that we looked at numbers 10 through 4. But now we're at the home stretch. We're in the top three verses from the book of Hebrews. All right. So are you ready? Number three. I love this verse because it just emphasizes that we have assurance in Christ. And this um, verse is actually, um, it's a quote from the Old Testament. Um, the original text was found in Deuteronomy 31.6. 
And um, the scripture is Hebrews 13, 5. And it states, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. Mm. Never is a long time. <laughs> never is a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and it's in every circumstance. God says that he'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. Mm. And um, I'm getting boy. chills just thinking about that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> But it's true. It's true. That's something that we can hold on to. It gives us so much assurance. That is awesome. I, I love that verse. And, uh, some may argue that that would have been number one. Let me tell you, this top three could have been in any order. They're all such amazing verses. So are you ready for number two, Kim? I am. All right. Number two is one of my favorite verses as well. And it really speaks mm -hmm. of how Jesus stands in the gap for us. When God looks at us, he no longer sees our sin, but he sees Jesus instead. Our number two verse in our top 10 most encouraging verses from the book of Hebrews is Hebrews 7.25. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. Kim, I... You know, I used to read that verse and thinking that Jesus is always praying for us as if every time we mess up, he has to ask God to forgive us. But I've kind of learned it's a little bit different. I think that means that Jesus is always standing in between us and God and always the one when God sees us, he no longer sees our sins. He sees Jesus Christ. I think that's pretty awesome. It's really awesome. It's like he's the bridge between us and God. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, uh, there were, as mentioned earlier, there were a lot of verses out of the book of Hebrews that we could have selected for the top 10. And we had to whittle it down. But there were a couple of three verses that we really had a hard time saying no to. And so we want to share with you three additional verses. These are our honorable mention verses. And Kim, I think you have a couple. I do. Um the first one is um, Hebrews 10, 14, and um, it reads, because by one sacrifice, he is made perfect forever. Those who are being made holy. I love that verse. Mm. And the reason I love it is that um, it talks about us being made holy. Because as Christians, it's like, we want to be like God. We want to be better. We want to be holy. But we're in process. Yes. But um, the first part of the verse says that um, by one sacrifice, that was Jesus, he made us perfect. So mm. even though we're in process, God looks at us through the lens of what Jesus did for us on the cross. And we're perfect in his eyes, even though... We're in process. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't made it there yet. I, I sure don't feel perfect, but God seems to think that in some yeah. ways. Uh, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I love that one. And, and I think you have another one, Kim. Mm, there is another one. So this one's back um, in Hebrews 13, and it's an, also another um, Old Testament um, reference. And this one is from Psalm 118, and it... Um, reads the lord is my helper i will not be afraid what can man do to me and um that's just awesome because god is more powerful and um, we can rest assured when we're um, under his wings and covering he's our helper um what can man do that's right that's right and and i had an honorable mention verse as well and this one may not be that encouraging to other people, but it was so encouraging to me because it was my first like real life verse, that verse that really helped me to understand what God called me to and the ministry he called me to, and that was to be a teacher of his word. It's Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit joints and marrow it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart again i don't know how encouraging it is to other people but for me that's a pretty important verse mm -hmm. so yeah Got so it. so kim i think we're ready number one the big one ready? numero uno <laughs> all right <laughs> Number one top encouraging verse in the book of Hebrews is, is I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. 
What is it? It's Hebrews 8.10. Hebrews 8.10. Yay. Let's read Hebrews 8.10. Hebrews 8.10 says, This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel. After that time, declares the Lord, I will put my law in their minds and write them in their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. That's another um, Old Testament um, quote that originally was found in the book of Jeremiah, um, verse 31, or chapter 31, verse 33. And I love this verse because it just talks about the intimacy Mm -hmm. that God has invited us into with him. Uh, We are his and he is ours. And um, I love that. When we were talking about this, Kim, you mentioned that it's not just a bunch of rules and regulations anymore. It's about a relationship with God. And even though it's a quote from the Old Testament, it's a keeper. <laughs> I think it deserves the spot on number one. So yeah. that was- his, his laws just aren't written um, in a book somewhere. Mm. God says he's going to put them on our hearts and he's going to make them just part of us and it's going to flow out of us. And that's um, God's work. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. Well, I have thoroughly enjoyed this time. I know, Kim, I believe you have as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. We may have to do this again sometime, but uh, uh, we just want to encourage everybody. uh, Next week, we're going to uh, restart our Bible study series as we look at uh, uh, a series called I told you so. A look at the prophecies of Jesus Christ. You're going to be listening, Kim? I will. That's great. Awesome. I hope you are too. Absolutely. So until then, see you next time. Uh, This is Kim. I'm Mike. This is The Pew. Have a great rest of your evening.